uh, who has just won Best Editing for Hotel Mumbai. Yes. And oh, why don't we make sure that you uh, accredit all of your team. Who were the editing team on, on Hotel Mumbai? Uh, my co-editor was Peter McNulty, who's a um, fantastic editor from the States. Uh, and we had you know, a whole team of assistants and, and others who helped. Um, Cleland Jones is a fellow Adelaide boy who's a good friend of mine who was, who was instrumental. Jack Smith started as an assistant but then ended up doing everything. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good team. It, I, there had to be unique challenges on such a project. You've got obviously the fact that you're dealing with real life tragedy, you've got real real people who you want to pay respect to, and then you have real footage as well as uh, all of the, the feature film that's being created for you. How do you, how do you approach the editing process for this? Um, <laughs> Well, it actually started with the real footage before we even sort of um, we wrote one page of the script. We went through about a year-long intensive research period for this film. So that involved um, basically going to news organisations around the world and getting this news footage, which in the first instance was used for research purposes to find out what was happening where. We used it to um, brief our actors and to do all these sorts of things. And um, you know, we did uh, again about a year's worth of interviews with different people around the world um, in order to write the film. And the the footage that um, you know that came about during this process, uh, you know, as you saw in the film, ended up being interspliced with the uh, with the footage that we shot. Um, this is a technique, an editing technique that I first used on my first short film, which is called Azadi. That was a film about. Um, you know, uh, an Afghan father and his son trying to battle their way through Australian detention centres. And we had gone out to the Woomera Detention Centre where we had filmed um, a protest which turned into a breakout. And that footage, together with news footage, was interspliced with footage we recreated that, that um, was used to create our film Azadi. And we used a similar technique in Hotel Mumbai. One of the key reasons for that was uh, India, uh, sorry, Mumbai is a city of over 20 million people. Um, you know, I, I think actually technically there's more people in Mumbai than all of Australia if you count the people who aren't there officially. And so it's a massive city and there were 12 sites across Mumbai that were attacked during the, um, during the, the terror attacks that happened. And there was no way that on our budget or really on any budget that anyone would be able to recreate the scale and the scope of what had happened. But also there are a lot of little you know, just little moments that you would never think to recreate that happened that were captured, you know, in verite form. And we worked really hard with a lot of different distributors, a lot of different broadcasters to get that footage, um, which was used in the film. Do you, how do you find that rule? I mean, how do you sort of set the rule in terms of telling the true story, but also making sure you're prioritizing storytelling in the edit? Look, we, um, you know, for, for us, capturing the, um, capturing the essence of the story was really important. Um, and, you know, we sat down again across the table from so many different survivors of these attacks, both guests of the Taj Hotel, staff members of the Taj Hotel, um, as well as um, security forces and other people who were involved. And, you know, their stories were our guiding lights sort of thing. Everything that happens in the film happened to someone. Um, we, we had a sort of dif difficult um, decision to make pretty early on where some of our interviewees who we used for research purposes, didn't want their names and their biographies to be used and their likeness to be used on film, but they were happy for their stories to be used for general research. Others were okay with their name and likeness being used. In the end, we made the decision to say that, um, you know, those people who were prominent people prior to the attacks, like uh, Chef Hermant Oberoi, who's a world famous chef, who was head chef of the Taj, his story is very well known. Um, the two police officers who went in and heroically tried to save many lives but failed, their stories are very well known. Their stories are kept intact, their names are kept intact in the film. In terms of the guests and the lower level staff members who were private citizens before going in, we amalgamated certain characters together and or changed their, their names, um, you know, to, to protect their privacy. But um, yeah, when you're dealing with a film like this, authenticity is really important. And it's, it's actually a very special week and weekend for us because the film has just come out in Mumbai, in India, um, so many months after the rest of the world. And so it's had a big release in India. They've dubbed the film into four different um, languages that they speak in India. And it's been really well received. So it was, it was, it was good. It's been Question down here. Uh, it's really uh, in your face terrorism, you know, very brutal and captures, uh, captures it at its worst. Was it important to 
have an impact in without showing too much violence as such. Yeah, like we, you know, it, if you if you analyse the film frame by frame, there's very little in the way of gore and blood splatter and stuff, but there's a very definite intention to try and make it feel as agonising as possible. We didn't want to pull any punches, and we wanted to show people what you know these heroic survivors had gone through. These were people from all different walks of life, from many different socio-economic backgrounds, from different races, religions, classes, who all those divisions evaporated when the when the attacks happened. And um, that's what that's what you know made me want to do the film in the first place. Like I wasn't interested in doing a film about terrorism per se. What what sort of really hooked me in the story was what I thought were very um, counterintuitive reactions, human reactions to extreme stress and terror. Like many people who've seen the film have sort of said, oh, you know, if, um, you know, what would I do if I were in that situation? I oh, know I would run, you know, or I think I would run. And I think most people would just try and run and hide and save themselves. But an, an odd thing happened with the Mumbai attacks where, you know, you had dozens of cases of people acting you know, against their immediate self-interest to try and help other people, and in many cases, perfect strangers. You know, in the, in the Taj Hotel, you had a lot of staff members, you know, who knew the way out. Some had even made it outside, shepherding people out to safety. And they turned around and came back inside to help more people. And, you know, the, what, you know people, people might not realise this, but, you know, even though, in, even though Mumbai is a very um, advanced sort of, you know, one of the great cities of the world, they didn't have a SWAT team, they didn't have a Special Forces team. <coughs> so for over 12 hours until the first Special Forces arrived from New Delhi, you know, every day common people were left to basically fend for themselves. And so you had this weird dichotomy where you had, you know, one of the world's great cities, very advanced in some ways, but you had regular everyday people having to step up and, and be there for one another. And that's, that's what made me want to do the film. And we didn't want to pull any punches. We wanted to try and put people you know, in their position to try and see what they had felt. And, um, yeah, that was the intention. Come on, the <coughs> Don't stop the back. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, congratulations. Thank you. I love the film. Thank you. Um, I guess on a personal level, how has working on this production changed you as a person? How do you view the world? Um, that's a really good question. Mm. I, I had a friend who, um, who was a childhood friend who was set to get married in the Taj on the 28th of November, which was on the, the weekend that it happened. Mm. And she's an Adelaide girl who my parents were friends before, um, before um, you know, I was even born. So we grew up, you know, we went, you know, grew up together. And she's a fashion designer from Adelaide. She married a, or she was a fiance with a Bollywood actor who came to Adelaide to film a television show, to film a film, sorry, and many years ago. Anyway, they were set to go to India to get married. They were gonna get married that weekend. And on the night the attack started, Chloe was, was in the Taj with her family, with, you know, these people come to our house for New Year's Day, like we're really close friends. And then at the last minute they said, you know what, our, our um, you know, we're already gonna have a really posh wedding. Let's go out and just do something a bit more casual. So they left the Taj about 20 minutes before the attacks started and they went to Cafe Leopold. On the way to Cafe Leopold, that was the first place that was attacked after CST Station. So just before they got there, they heard gunshots. They, the gunshots were at the cafe they were going to go to and they thought, well, maybe we should go back to the Taj for safety. But anyway, they didn't go there. Then the Taj was hit. They went to a third place, which was an Italian restaurant across town. They were there for a while, sort of hunkering down with, with friends. And then um, and then the hospital, the Karma Hospital, which is next, next door, very close by to that Italian restaurant, that was then hit by the terrorists trying to get people who they didn't get the first times in the first places. So, you know, these, you know, all the way from Adelaide, Australia, these friends of mine weirdly were not pulled into it and in that they weren't directly <coughs> there when it happened, but they were minutes away from it. And I remember, you know, hearing about that and being horrified at their story, but I didn't know much else about the story other than that. And it was and it was watching um, this movie, this documentary, Surviving Mumbai, which opened my eyes to, um, you know, to something very positive, which was, you know, again, I'm kind of repeating myself, but you had all of these different cases of people from all these different walks of life banding together to help, help one another. And like we're often told in the media of all these different things that sort of divide us, whether it be class or race or religion, all these different things. 
you know, in those walls you saw all those divisions evaporate and you saw people sort of coming together and, and you know, you also had stories of like hedge fund managers who quit their job as hedge fund, man hedge fund managers after, after going through the attacks. One of them, he started a NGO to try and promote tolerance and understanding and cross-cultural sort of participation, all this stuff. So even though it was a really dark time and obviously it was horrific beyond measure, you know, it, it also brought out the best in people in a weird way as well. Final question. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. I know when I first saw the film, I was just unbelievably, you know, gobsmacked by it. So beautifully filmed. Thank you. The editing, how long did it take and what was the budget? How long did it take and what was the budget was the question. Editing took a very long time. Um, so I cut off my finger when, uh, in the, when we were making the film. And so you can see this here. Wow. And that, that allowed us in a weird way. I didn't mean to do it, obviously. But um, I, I had moved a fan, on, not on set, but on an after set function. And the, the finger came off. And so we had to delay production for a, for a fair while, and that allowed us to go through the footage and see what we had missed and what we needed to cut. Um, our film was also in the um, it was a Weinstein film, so the, the Weinstein company was distributing our film. They had, they weren't producers; they didn't have any um, money in our film or anything, but they were distributing our film. And had the finger not come off wouldn't have delayed and we would have been ensnared in, in the worst part of that. In the end, we kind of sidestepped a little bit. We had to go through a big bankruptcy uh, period to, um, you know, when they were going bankrupt to get out of it. But what that meant is that we had a lot longer to edit the film. And because, because the film, um, you know, has got so many different perspectives, it goes through so many different characters, having that extra time, I think really, in a weird way, helped the film. Yeah because it helped us find the balance that we needed to, to get it right. Um, and also there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of visual effects that were needed. They might not be that evident in the film, but we were trying to create one of the world's great hotels in Adelaide, <laughs> um, as well as some of it in India. So we were filming some things in, a, in uh, Adelaide and some things in India, and in the editing process had to try and connect these, these uh, places together. And so um, I think the editing altogether took about six or seven months just for the cut, but then it was like another six or seven months for visual effects and sound and music and other things. It would have been more compressed had it not been for the Weinstein company collapsing, but because of that, you know, whilst that hurt us in a financial sense, in a big way, in a distribution sense, it, creatively it gave us more time. So. Thank you very much, Anthony, and Thank congratulations you. again on the film. Thank you very much. Thank